This episode may contain strong language and adult themes. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Well, it is that time of year that we remember those who have given their lives uh, and their freedoms for for Queen Country and not just our country, but uh, all over all over the world as well. And um, to all of those people who have laid down their lives, wherever they may be, we we give thanks to you and we remember you. Uh, and for those of you who didn't know, um, Chris can't be here with us tonight because he is, um, well, he's actually learning badminton this week, which makes a change from dance on his uni course. But that was Chris from uh, the 22s uh, playing the last post, who is actually the reigning two times national bugle champion, believe it or not. Uh, anyway, uh, it is time to get on with the rest of the show. Uh, and uh, we might as well get straight into it and say, hello, Tim. Hello. Um, Tim, we've not seen you before, so no. do be, have you ever watched the show? Shall I be honest? You can be honest because we know that you haven't. No, I've never seen it. Great. <laughs> that makes it absolutely superb because those people who've watched the show come on here um, slightly prepared. So the fact that you haven't makes it all the more fun for the rest of us. Um, so, Tim... Tell us uh, where you come from, what you do, and why you're here tonight. Sounds like bloody blind date. It is. Um, <laughs> Hello, Silla. <laughs> um, I'm from Sirencester in Gloucestershire, uh, where I played most of my rugby, and I was chairman of the club there. And I've met uh, Julian, Pete, and Sam out in Warsaw on the on the Warsaw Rugby Festival when we go out there. Um, I'm an IT director. I've got two sons who live close by me here in Gloucestershire. And uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Not much to me. Great. Does anybody care about that bit? Nope. Great. Super. Especially not uh, me. Man, Tim, Tim, what I do care about, what I really care about a lot is you've been on tour with these three. Get your thinking cap on. Get look at Julian already. Get your sorting cap on. It's Harry Potter style tonight. Um, <laughs> because in a little bit later on, we're going to ask you to put your hand in the in the Harry Potter sorting hat and come up with the best stories for each one. So Julian, it's not <laughs> just about you. He's going to pick a story for all three of you tonight. Um, anyway, welcome to the rest of the gang, Julian. Say hello, Julian. Hello, Julian. Well done, Pete. Hi, Pete. Yeah, well done. And Sam, just say say hello to your moustache because it's down here. Hello, moustache. Do that. Do that. Sam. Don't do that, Sam. We might see your bottom again. <laughs> Sam, do that so we can see you've got a moustache. No. Come in, not bad. Oh. It's only been a week. It's only been a week. Is it me or is it no, the printed one on your t-shirt, Sam? 
that? No, man. It's the film. Fuck oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> Is she coming on? Oh, the wait. Oh, my God. Show. See you, you fucking idiot, Mike. You mentioned Harry Potter. And what did she go and do? Bring me the fucking sign. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. There's no fucking way I missed 15 minutes of rugby with you clowns. Well, there, well, there's a son done. So ah. you guys didn't the ah. word rugby? He just fell off his chair. <laughs> Promo. Promo. You, see, you said move it, so I moved it and the fucking thing fell off its pedestal. You, you're supposed to move yourself, not the iPad. Oh, fucking hell. Honestly. <laughs> I mean, the same sort of apply. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Let's oh, check in on the you. stash. Let's check in on the stash growth. He hasn't got one. His t-shirt has a better moustache. Oh yeah, fair enough. My teenage son has a better moustache. He's got <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> and you I don't know. Like. <laughs> Sam, are you okay there, dude? He's struggling with He's his IT. He's fucking dizzy, I know that. <laughs> Should we? I tell you what, boys. Let's just all take a little bit of a break while we watch Sam. Viewers, this is what happens when you get it fucking wrong. This is what happens when you try and do origami with one hand. It never fucking works. <laughs> Sam. Yes. Move to your left. Fucking again. That's it. Yeah. No, no, not you. Don't move. <laughs> Don't move your iPad, move you. Wait, I've moved. Good lad. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> You're next. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm just going to keep this shit in because it's actually probably the funniest part of tonight's show. Oh. Um, Phil, how's you, man? I thought you were on your way to Canada today, or is that Wednesday? Wednesday. I'm going. I'm leaving on Veterans Day. I will be the one wearing a poppy and aluminum too. Good on you. Got mine. Yeah, we're, we're all your, where's all your poppies there, lads? Oh, get them here. Oh. You're not. Yeah. I, just, no. I just sent a whole bundle Believe it or not, I made them in the wall. Here's, is they were? Yeah, supply in Germany. <laughs> supply in Germany and Britain with steel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, were they making heavy water where you are? Uh, no, that was in Norway. Ah, okay. Not far away then. No. No, just over. Same just thing. <laughs> Um, so, Phil, how's your week been, mate? It's been pretty fucking cool, <laughs> admittedly. And why is that funny? <laughs> I was so hoping that you'd come in wearing the full costume again, Phil. Oh, that would be I'm funny. Looking forward to it. Did Mike oh. tell you what happened after the last one? No. No, no, do, do tell everybody, mate. Do yeah, tell uh, apparently, apparently, wearing a wig in a government facility... Doesn't go over well with a person, and therefore I got reprimanded. <laughs> and the, other, the other four wigs I wore all year, no problem. <laughs> By reprimand, did you mean you were told off and got fined? Oscar. No, I was just told to uh, to remove it because a person found it offensive. So well, you were told to move, you were told to remove the ferret from your head then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. they found that offensive, imagine if you'd have come dressed like Sam did on last week's show when we saw that photo. Interesting when you said that, because I I my response was if you think my wig is offensive, just wait till my next costume at Christmas when I come in dressed as Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just cut that bit, shall we? Yeah, I'll just take that. <laughs> he's not Jesus. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> Stone him. Stone him there. Um, Julian's kids are coming in going, no, I'm not going to ask that. I'm just going to leave. He was actually, shamed to say it, we're more interested in the Man City Liverpool result. So apparently he has to support Liverpool for a week as a punishment from his schoolmates. <laughs> That's freaking great. 
Yeah, I mean, sporting football is a punishment. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Without a yeah. that. Um, I, I, I've got no idea where we are now because Phil joined us and then um, we started talking about... Oh, we Again, you weren't we're talking about rugby. rugby. I guarantee you. Oh, yeah, I guarantee you we were. Well, you, were asking, you were asking Tim and saying to Tim about how he met Asti. Oh, you carry on, mate, because I've not, I've lost the fucking plot. That's not that's where you were. So yeah, we're co- we're coming on to that, Tim. Tim's got a little few. Tim's got a few minutes to to think of suitable stories about you three at the bottom of my screen. Suitable after last week. That means no, no suitable limit whatsoever. Let me rephrase: suitably embarrassing. I think Julian knows the only one I've got anything on is him, really. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I disappeared under the screen? <laughs> Listen, I'm sure everybody's got something on Pete, but it's always the same story. So, you know, Sam tells the same story about Pete. Julian says the same story about Pete. Crouchy came on and said exactly the same story about Pete. Pete, have you got any other pranks other than waking people up early in the morning? Well, I wouldn't have woke up Tim because he goes and stays in another hotel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Julian, not that daft. To be honest, though, I stayed in that hotel the first year I went to Warsaw, and it is cracking. Especially when you get onto the 30, 43rd floor, sit in the jacuzzi at the end of the first day, and two French birds hop in with you. I was like, there's a story there. Yeah, I not really, you know. Last week we talked about uh, uh, the very large Romanian chat with me wasn't uh, so in, in much fun. Yeah, that's what you know. That's what you know, normally, normally, even though he was chat. You, sorry, you just you just said you had a very large Romanian into you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a euphemism? No. Are you sure? Was there a sock on the door? I'm going to leave it at that. No. Julian, you know the rules on this show. Yeah. You can't it, was co- co- it was one of my fellow referees who was on tour with me. His nickname is uh, Super Mario. He has a big bushy moustache. He's a Romanian chap. And we jumped up into the jacuzzi at the end of the day and two very, very pleasant French young ladies jumped in with us at the time. That was it. Nothing more than that. And then we went down, got changed and went to the party at the, uh, the boathouse. Hey, boat house. Are you sure? Are you sure what, we, what we didn't forget, we got suit because you suit up for this party because it's quite nice. We both suited up. We were both exhausted. We've been refereeing all day. I've been playing as well. I'm sure Tim's going to tell you about that later. <laughs> and uh, and we both fell asleep for four hours and shocked to the party. Yeah, that part has changed a bit though, hasn't it, Julian? From the yeah, from the yeah. early days, it's now it has to be a little bit more politically correct. Um, yeah, I, wouldn't say, to I wouldn't say it's more politically correct, but it's definitely a lot um, a, a lot more women there than men, uh, than there were back in. Well, there used to be, there used to be women there. They just used to be dancing on the table naked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What all that means is all that means oh, is you yeah. have to have oh, men yeah. dancing on the table naked just about. Oh, that happens as well. Oh, don't you, don't you worry about that. <laughs> in that case, it, it's, yeah. now Sam, did you notice yeah. that you were talking about uh, bushy moustaches? Let's let's have a look at yours. Your eyebrows bigger. No, I mean, it's only been a week. He looks like a sex mate, pest. Mate, no. set, set no, that's all. It's, I'm going for the Freddy. Freddy Mercury. It's going for the Freddy this year. Oh yeah! If you're going to the Freddy this year, next week, what I want to see you is dressed up as they were in "I Want to Break Free." So you want me to look even more gay than I normally look? Yes, please. Okay, I'll try my best. We're a family show. We're fully inclusive. Like Tim says, there has to be an equal number of men dancing naked on the tables as ladies okay. dancing naked on the tables. Okay, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try my best. Try my best. Great. Super. And next week, we should be having the guys from uh, Oddballs on as well. So that'll go down really well for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually are, are we getting some free stash of Oddballs as well, are we? Oh, mate, don't go there. Why? Right. The year before you came to um, Chester for the international warm-up, yeah. sponsored by Oddballs, Will, bless his cotton socks, tried to send them down last minute because he forgot. Put them in two great big boxes of short socks, tops, the lot. Sent yeah. them down. I said, send them straight to Chester, to the rugby club. They got logged in with, with the courier, en route with the courier, disappeared. The, the whole thing disappeared off the internet, the tracking. They never turned up at all. Uh, two great big boxes of oddballs kit uh, failed no. to turn up. But, I mean, to be fair, Will, uh, you, you know, Chris was over in Sierra Leone working uh, a couple of years ago with, with the school over there. 
uh, and um, Odd Balls were absolutely brilliant and they supported him hugely. They uh, they gave him tops to wear and stuff to take over and rugby balls to take over as well um, to teach the kids over in Sierra Leone um, to dump their footballs and play rugby. So, brilliant. Hold on. You, you put Chris and teach in the same sentence. How does that work? Mate, you do know he's doing a degree to be a teacher right now, don't you? Again, I asked the same question, Chris and teaching in the same sentence. I mean, when he did tell me that's what he was going to do, I have to say I spat my drink out. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I suggest that we all turn up in proper Zoom style next week, then. Every one of us wearing oddballs underwear, but no pants, no trousers. Sorry, I've been hanging around with Americans too much. Well, that's, oh. fine if you, that's fine if you've got a pair of odd balls. Yeah, I actually, my, mine lasted about five years and then decided to wear out on one of the cheeks. Oh, the good good for me, me then. I'm actually wearing a pair right now, but I'm not. Let's have a look. Ball. Julian, Julian, we need to see. <laughs> you should not have said that. Oh, said that. dear. It's, it's, it's become a sexual. <laughs> I'm not pulling my trousers off you lot. Not like last week. So oh, Julian, sorry, that, Sam. that was Sam. Sorry, Julian. I don't know if I'm lucky or not, but I seem like I am lucky that I'll be in the Canadian Rockies next Monday. And that, un- that was actually quite lucky. Darn. Um, I, I've got a funny feeling it might be about time to take a break. Anyway, uh, and then take I'll, I'll, I'll put the stopwatch on for for part two when we come back. But right now, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back right after this. When you need clear and concise match official communication systems, look no further than the brand new Axiwee AT350. Radios are always, that they're always useful, they always help us, especially the Axiwees, where all three of us can be open at any time, we can have open communication. Available now from refcomsglobal.net. Invest in profits into match official development worldwide. Welcome to part two of the 22 Dropouts, where you can see the moustache competition for Movember between Samuel Ramage in Malta, a very experienced and very old rugby referee, and a 13-year-old boy who's clearly beating him hands down in the moustache stakes. Well done, Chris. Well done. Well done. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) Sam, how does it feel to play a child uh, against your, your lovely Tash? I couldn't get enough belly button hair out of my belly button to actually put some more on my lips. So, yeah, fair, fair, fair done to the lad. Phil, do me a favour, mate. Just pluck some more of those ear hairs and post them to him, will you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, this is a rugby show uh, and there's been no rugby, so we're not going to fucking talk about any of it. Um, but there hasn't, has there? Um, did anybody see at the weekend the thing, the Tri Nations thing? Yeah. Aussie, Aussie, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been summer, I think. What do we, what do we make of the send-ins off? Both right. Um, absolutely, by no, I saw the Aussie yeah. one. I thought they were good. No, no argument. So, they were, they when were the kidding. first one went off, the second one had to go for sure. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. But interestingly enough, um, there was one a bit later on that was called as penalty only. Where the arm, it wasn't high degree of danger, no, moderate, yes, high speed, no, moderate speed, yes. That was, that was like Cobb. Yeah, yellow card. Is it Cobb? No, yeah, I don't think it was a yellow card, mate. The guy was dipping down, so mitigated down. Really? Yeah, it, 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 starting level, yellow card, but the guy was dipping, so penalty. I'm sure you said yellow card on our WhatsApp. Yeah, no, but I changed my mind after. <laughs> <laughs> so what you doing is you're changing your mind now, aren't you, mate? Yeah, look at that, yeah. I'm going to post your comment that that was a yellow card. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you will. Julian, why don't you go and just sit on the sofa and let the boys in? Because they'll probably be more entertaining with stories about you. Oh, no, that's, that's not happening. They got way <laughs> too much dirt on me. Absolutely way too much dirt. Uh, Talking of dirt on you, I, I've got a funny feeling that our, our newest member tonight... Um, Mr. Tim Thompson might have some dirt on you. It's it's not really dirt. It's just like quite an amusing story. Well, it was no, amu- it was amusing to us. 
Do anyway, <laughs> Birdie laughs as well, doesn't he? So Good yeah, story, Birdie, sure. Birdie laughs every time he tells it. So we we were, I think it was, I'm going to say 2006, Julian. Oh, 2010 it was. Was it? Oh, that no, it must have been 11 then. We were there in 11. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So we'd Get been a couple. We'd, we'd, we'd been a couple of times. So this is my club, Soren Sister. We'd been a couple of times before. We went in 2005, lost in the final, I think. Won it in 2006, and we we're over there in 2011. Julian was refereeing again, so a few of the boys knew Julian from our previous trips and knew exactly what type of uh, referee he was. So they completely ignored him and just kept taking the piss. Um, he got quite um, vocal and, and, and I think sent one of our players off at one stage for being too drunk. That was in the um, final. No, but, but <laughs> so, we, so we had one pool game anyway, one pool game. And I can't remember against who the team it was against, but they were short of a player and Julian offered to play. And our, um, our winger's eyes lit up when he saw yeah, Julian... Julian against him and uh, basically the ball came out to Julian. Julian's, you know, trundling up the wing at, wing at you know, full speed, about six miles an hour. And uh, our, our Exocet winger came in and literally cut him in half. And you could hear the air expel from his lungs at a rapid rate of knots as he went <laughs> and went down. Like a sack of spuds. <laughs> there I are think... some holes in your story there. There was some holes in your story there, Tim. I wasn't playing on the wing. I was playing number 10. That's and even worse. You, you were just hanging about that's on the, only, the wing that's there. That's the only thing that true. <laughs> yeah. I but was yeah, it, it was... Yeah. It, it got absolutely mullered. Uh, and then, yes, it was in the final. Yeah, you sent um, Matt Carter off for being drunk. Because he couldn't stand up. <laughs> I didn't send him off. I politely asked your coach to replace him. Or That's you nice would send him off. I did give him a challenge, though. I did give him a chance. To st- I gave him a chance to stay on the field. I said, if you can stand up for a count of five, I'll let you stay on the pitch. Yeah, and I got to two before he fell flat in his face. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I asked him politely to substitute himself off. Yeah. And every time I went to the West Country Sevens for years after that, he was always working there as a, as a marshal or something. And uh, he'd always go, I can't believe, I can't believe you made me leave, made me leave the pitch in that fight because mm. I was too blunt. But it's, that, that, that tournament is a great tournament, the, the Warsaw Rugby Festival. I've been going since 2003 and it's just the great hosts, great atmosphere, the refereeing sometimes a bit shocking, but that's that's when that's when I'm on the pitch, um, but now we have we have a good laugh, don't we? We have a very yeah. good laugh. But no, it's it is it is good fun and um, made some great friendships. I mean, that's how I met all these guys, to be honest. And then now, wherever I seem to go, if I go to Dubai or Vegas, I end up bumping into Julian. So can't get away from him now. Like Camellia. Open <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. And you get rid of me with penicillin, Bruce, Bruce, Pete. Tim, are you still with that um, blonde Russian lady or Polish lady? Yeah, she wasn't blonde, mate. She was dark-haired. Dark-haired, all right. <laughs> are, you still, are you still with her? No. Hello, Daryl. Hi, guys. Oh. How are we? <laughs> Daryl, oh, Daryl that's a very short cricket AGM you've been on tonight. Yeah, the, the moral of the story is don't go to the AGM because you always get a job, don't you, so. Ah, so was your job the video reviewer of the officials on the pitch? No, I've got some. And getting the camera angles right. Some job nobody else wanted, so uh, they've uh, co-opted me to do that, because I come from rugby stock, and they, the cricket club rent, rent the ground off the rugby club. They thought it would be great to put me in the position as a representative between the rugby club and the cricket club, which will go down well in the rugby committee, I'm sure. No, it won't. Yeah, we'll we'll just hate you forever, and so will every other member of your rugby club. Um, so um, you you've been a bit busy recently, haven't you, Chappers? Uh, I've been trying to keep out of the spotlight on social media. Yes, and uh, trying not. <laughs> I to wonder risk- why. Well, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. When your com when your communication belt is in the wrong place and you have to adjust it <laughs> and the video cameras on you. That's about as much bullshit as you used to spew when you're in Stockholm. No, no, but you have to watch the whole sequence of events. If you watch the sequence of events as I'm about to come onto the pitch, you can see that I'm having a problem with the communication belt and I have to change it twice. I've got they're trying to adjust it, I've got my top up. And, and you had to suck in your gut. Had to suck in my gut, yeah. Live on telly. It was the right decision though, it was a big start. What, sucking in your gut was the right decision? No, the yeah. decision we made in the game. Oh, okay. We, to be fair, mate, we've forgotten about that decision. Yeah. And the only it's... thing that the entire world is talking about is your, your manly profile now. It's yeah. like... It's... <laughs> the, t- the, the TMO went on silent to him and said, uh, mate, do yourself a favour, suck in a bit. Mate, we've all been there. Listen, I can't walk past the... The boots window in, in town without going, oh, fuck, I'm doing that. <laughs> so anybody who's about 40 years old or older will know exactly what I mean. And um, Daryl, uh, even even the young guys on our show, uh, when they bother to turn up because they're all at uni and they've got to do some work now, uh, bless their cotton little socks. That's what life's about, boys. Get on with it. But even they will learn in the not too distant future. Some of them have already learned this, that you must you must have a look every every so often. You must look down at yourself and go, oh, fuck, and then suck it in. And when you get older, as you get older, that gets worse. That's an advert for Viagra, what you just described, though. Yeah, it? it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Pete, the only thing you need to suck in, according to all the stories about you, is in your pants. Uh, I can't. Well, I, if I could do that, I'd never leave the house. <laughs> to be honest, Pete, did you just mention Viagra? Yeah. Yeah, Tim. Is there a story there? <laughs> <laughs> Tim takes it to stuff him. You have a couple of blue pills in your pocket when we were also last time. Did I have some pills in my pocket? Uh, the blue ones. <laughs> Pete's nodding. I can't, yeah. I can't remember, did I? You did. Yeah, Were they memory? Um, they must have been memory pills. They obviously forgot to take them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then, gentlemen, I think that um, that brings something else. Who else has taken performance enhancing drugs here? <laughs> Apart from Tim. Drinking one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, always. Uh, but apart from the liquid variety, um, I think, Tim, y- we are sending the testers round to your house. <laughs> they're a bit bored at the moment. They've got nothing yeah. else to do. So they'll uh, they'll be round soon. <laughs> and Make sure they're female, will you? <laughs> have you seen him? <laughs> and I mean him. I mean, have you seen him? <laughs> and you call me. <laughs> to be fair, I was more looking at uh, 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 something else that popped up on my screen. <laughs> He's touching himself up as well. Look. I've got a lot of hair in there. Anything with your phone, Pete? Come on, his his screen going to swipe left or right? Do you reckon? Does it depends whether it depends whether it's Sam or Julian speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, if we started speaking, you could go either way. Yeah, that's true. Julian, oh, um, was it Bernie? Uh, have you heard from him recently? No, not for a while. Not, for a while. Back in not since for a Pete. Not since Pete hijacked your Tinder account. No, uh, I haven't seen him since um, West Country. I think when I saw him over in uh, in Keensham. So Pete hijacked. Let me just get this right, okay? Pete hijacks your Tinder account. He makes out that you need you. You are interested in gentlemen rather than ladies. <laughs> Bernie becomes a match for you, and clearly you meet then in the West Country. You've not seen him since. So what happened when you did meet? <laughs> okay, the, the tackle, the name is irrelevant. Yeah, the tackle happened in West, in, in Warsaw. And what Pete did to my phone was found out pretty damn quickly when I got back to Stockholm. But he did, uh, I did wonder, why the hell are all these extremely... Um, uh, why, are, why are all these weird people popping up on my phone? Like hairy men. Everybody said trans, transvestite, transsexual. <laughs> what? Why? Why is all this going on? And then I eventually checked my settings and realised somebody's been silly buggers and had my phone 
and I couldn't remember who'd had my phone because I hadn't been on Tinder. Yet. And that was, of course, me. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, not, sorry, not, not sorry, not sorry, sorry, not sorry, yeah, sorry, not sorry. yeah exactly. But now you I know got, who it was. You got more of a uh, apology from me than the uh, Irish team. <laughs> <the week>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've got to say, I, I, and you are life and soul quite clearly, and I can't wait to go on tour when you're there as well. I've got to say, mm-hmm. one day all of this is going to come back and it's going to land on your head on one trip away tenfold, mate. And I want to be there to watch. I really want to be there when everybody gangs up and gets you back. And I'm sure you'll, yeah. I'm sure you'll take it in the spirit it's meant. Oh, there's no problem about that. Good lad. Because we've been planning it for three weeks already. <laughs> it just, Mike, it just means that you've got to watch your back straight after that. So don't wish too much, mate. Uh, no, you see, I'm going to do a Sam Ramage. <laughs> and the Sam Ramage is a very, very, very subtle, very subtle tactic. What, what sleep? You what sleep? <laughs> well, with no, no clothes on with your, with your arse hanging out like last week. Oh, God, honestly. It's like you've never seen a Scotsman's arse before. What the fuck? Hands up if you've seen a Scotsman's arse before, apart from Pete when he saw yours. There you go. That's just proved my point. However, Sam, fast forward to minute 37 and 33 seconds of last week's episode. Brutal. You are? Brutal, Sam. 37 minutes. 37 minutes. And 33 seconds. It's like a beautiful evening with a full moon. Do it there. (laughs) It's like that yeah. Jaffa cake advert, isn't it? <laughs> totally clear. I'm, do, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. Thirty-seven minutes. What? <laughs> thirty-seven uh, minutes. Thirty-seven minutes. Thirty-three seconds. I, I think Tim and Daryl are the only two who haven't seen this photograph yet. No, I haven't seen it. Put it on the screen, please, somebody. Yeah, please. No, <laughs> doesn't need to go up twice. <laughs> Can't do that. We'll get in trouble. Have you got it yet, Sam? By the way, Phil's had, like, had to go to a meeting. Bye, Phil. I've got, I've got it on silent. It's on our screen, yeah. but we're busy. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and Instagram. Just search for at 22 drop 37, 33, you said, right? Yeah, but I just made that shit up, mate. Oh, you're a fucking tit. Arse. Oh, it was, <laughs> oh, was, no, it was your arse we saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your ass didn't make the web, Sam. It got, it got censored by YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, they take too the many, straight too away. Many, um, too, um, many oh, holes, too many holes showing. While while Sam goes and has a look <laughs> while Sam goes and has a look for his bottom on the on the on the uh, last week's episode, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back right now. Da, da, Dara was sitting there going, What the fuck have I walked into? <laughs> it's good to know that nothing's changed, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, oh, no, no, no. it's like Absolutely. I've never been away, yeah. Part three of this week's uh, terrible, terrible episode of the 22 Dropouts. Um, I'm not certain that there's any better episode in the past 32. So you'll just have to grin and bear it. And if you don't like it, tough, carry on watching to the end. Because it usually gets a bit funnier. Um, so Daryl, we're joined by Daryl. Daryl's famous. Daryl is now a premiership assistant referee. And we all we all saw you on telly, mate. You're 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 famous. Only for um, only for twenty six minutes, mm. by default. <laughs> Tw- no, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Any hands up? Anybody else on this on this call now who has AR'd or refereed in the Premiership in England, apart from Daryl? See, there you go, mate. Top of the tree. Yeah. I'm going to- I thought they were going for you. Archer with a better haircut. Thank you. 
I was thinking Philip Schofield. If you looked on the social media channels, I got um, compared to David Ginola a few times, which I'm really? was really happy about. Who the fuck is here's, what, here's, what, here's one we made earlier. Yeah. <laughs> now, Daryl, um, I, I hate to go back over old ground, but it, it's quite funny. Uh, and if you didn't want us to, you want to fucking come on tonight. <laughs> How many social media views did you get of your video? I think it was somewhere around three quarters of a million. If you look at all, me all platforms. <laughs> will you so, do me a uh, favour? Will you will you put a feeder for this show on? Because we can't get above 128. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course. The, the, yeah, and that there was some. Uh, you know, I don't know how how much you read the comments. I didn't really read them. I, no, we don't read below the line. We just look at the numbers, and mate, it was, it was one of those things we've all done, and it was quite funny. And and, and fair play, you've taken it absolutely brilliantly. Yeah, there were some nice comments in there actually, and uh, I think it, I think because it came just after the interview with Freddie Flintoff, didn't it, where he talked about the that was on the telly. A lot of people were going, oh, you know, this is you shouldn't this is you shouldn't pick on this guy because he could be fat or overweight. He could have, you know. How's it affecting him mentally and all of that? Honestly, I just really wanted to reply to some of them, but of course, I wasn't allowed to. Yeah. How does it make you feel mentally? I don't fucking know. I'm not that interested. <laughs> it's yeah. just the other day at the office, isn't it, mate? It's like me dropping my flag at Twickenham and then having to go on the pitch and picking it up. Um, it doesn't matter what the commentators say. You just, <laughs> you did it. It's water off a duck's back. I do have to say that it's a really good spot by um by the guy from one of the irish uh, clubs who picked it up and, put, and posted it first on twitter because uh you know it, you know it was gone in the flash yeah yeah and then bt sport as soon as bt started retweeting it that was it wasn't it it was it had gone viral yeah dan robinson tweeted it and then you know once everybody got on the bandwagon it was, it was away wasn't it so anyway it is what it is um you can't change it Mor there's a moral for every story isn't it? why would seriously why would you You've got that's you're more famous than all of us put together. Um, we've we've been sort of putting this off a little bit all, all night so far, um, but it is now time to turn to uh, to Tim and to uh, ask Tim. Yeah, Tim. Yes, it's your turn, mate. It's um, <coughs> you've had all night. Look at them. Look at Sam already. Whenever Sam's worried, he if you notice body language wise. He sits back like this, he rubs his arm, and then he comes forward again. It's going uh, to be an anti-climax, Mike. I don't really have a lot on Sam. Sam is I'll... an anti-climax. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't have anything on Sam, to be honest with you. We've seen this body. Yes. That's, I mean, your wife says you're an anti-climax. You can't compare me to you. <laughs> I can, because I know I'm an anti-climax. You just don't think you are. <laughs> no, I, I, I genuinely, honestly, um, I, I don't have anything on, on Sam. Pete, as I said, he's he's just a deviant. Come here, come here, come here. Just make it up. We always do about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Damn yeah. right. Damn right. You've watched this show before, I can tell. I mean, say, Pete, you had them all believing I played on the wing. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> I did, 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 we, did, we, did we talk about it last week or not? I can't remember now. Did, did you not like, try on someone, some chick's miniskirt? He did, swap yeah. shots? Yeah, one of the girls who plays for the rugby game. I, I think we should see Pete in the miniskirt. We saw it last week, didn't we? We saw it last week, didn't we? No. Yes, we did. No? Have you two watched the show? No, not last week. You already put no, it on today. <laughs> yeah. How can we watch it? You want to put it up to the you lazy sod? Have you, been got, stuff? have you been trolling my Facebook? Have we got photos of Pete? Who needs yeah, to give us the permission? It, it, it was Jules, Jules showed us the picture last week, remember? It's on the thing, but you've obviously edited out, you muppet. No, I missed that. Yeah, I missed that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's so a the thing last week. Facebook. Uh, by the way, viewers and dear listeners, don't worry about this. While we argue amongst ourselves as to whether we did or we didn't show Pete in the miniskirt, just bear with us and we'll show you again. It, it was it. The challenge was, if I remember correctly, that um, you... you you fancied her miniskirt, and so you said to her, "If you you can get into my shorts, I can get into your miniskirt." Pete, right? You couldn't get into it because your ass was too fucking big, and you just made it look like it for the photo. 
But, no, you know I, what? I, I, think I, you did. I think I said to her, I says, I bet you I can get into your skirt. Yeah. And she just took it off. And gave it to you and, and said, there you go, try that. Oh, there you are, try that. And there I am, all this beer walking around in her skirt. I think you photo of you last week, but I don't recall looking low enough down to see whether you were wearing shorts or a skirt. No, it was denim skirt. Denim skirt, eh? Imagine what it'd look like oh, if you had heels on. Oh, it's a skirt. No, a skirt. It's a mini skirt. We said mini skirt, you muppet. No, I never noticed that last week. Look at them oh legs. God. I'd rather yeah. fucking not. Oh, do that. To be fair, he's done well because I think he managed that to hold his wallet and his beard while he put that on. Yeah, and the, if you don't notice, if he turns around, his ass is hanging up the back. <laughs> 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 what Kardashian style? Oh yeah, she had, yeah. She had my shorts. Ass crack everywhere. Yeah, she had your shorts. So w- was the ass Kardashian style there, Pete? Just normal, plump, plump, round, and full of Botox. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think you uh, watch more TV and stuff like that because I, I was about to say who are the Kardashians then, but I've got no idea. So. I've got no well, idea. I, first few years ago, I, I started hearing about Kardashians a while ago. I thought they were in front of a Star Trek episode. I had no idea. Do, do they have one of those funny uh, funny languages as well, like the Klingon? Yeah, probably. Yeah, thought so. <laughs> Daryl, you thought you were coming on a rugby show, didn't you, again? Yeah, well, I... I, I uh... I anticipate there might be some rugby discussed with the uh, some rugby coming back at the weekend, yeah. But so where where are you this Friday then? Next Friday. Next Friday. Where are you next Friday? Sale versus Northampton. On the line or four? Four. You'll be on. Don't worry. Somebody's going to pull the quad, and you'll be on. Just make sure that you get the um, the radio belt sorted before you start. Absolutely. Because that's where it all goes wrong, you know. It's the radio belt. Normally the radio bit holds it all in if you get it in the right position, you see, just pull it tight. Why do you think I've got one of those great big radio vests with really, really tight things across my belly? <laughs> Is that the one with the muscles built into it to make you look? Oh, no, there's it's... a good idea. Mate, pe- patent pending. I'm just, go- I'm just going to email my, my kit guy now. I want muscles here. I want big shoulders, slightly bigger chest, actually. Just, just a chest that works instead of flops, uh, and uh, a belly. That's some set of moves you've got there, honestly. Yeah, it is. But, uh, all, all the uh, all the new Premiership kid arrived this week, and it's all super slim, super tight, super cut fit. So, have you been have you been modelling it like this yeah. in front of the mirror? <laughs> Lift it in the bag in case I don't need it. Ah, when, when are we getting the panel kit? Um, when the games, season though. starts. When, <laughs> so that's that's what uh, September twenty twenty one. Yeah, the championship kit is due out apparently in three weeks. Three weeks. Ready for a January start. We're going to start warm up games. If they can pre Christmas, I've heard. Mm. Now there's a rumor. <laughs> warm up games start pre Christmas. Hashtag you heard it here first. Well, Ealing, uh, Ealing played Saturday against Newcastle, didn't they? And, uh, What's all this I've heard then? So uh, what I've heard is that I'm going to put you in a difficult position here because I know you're going to say I can't comment. So let's let's open this up to the group. It's like therapy, this, isn't it? Let's open it to the group. Saracens will play zero games in the championship before they get promoted. Discuss. Well, there, Certainly, was the there, there was the rumour there that... Is, there's a lot of talk that the Championship will not start at all. If things carry on, the Championship, if it doesn't start in January, will be cancelled. Therefore, Saracens will be promoted because the other clubs, apparently, the club chairman, when they met um, last week, I think it was, they're quite keen to get Saracens back in the Premiership. They are a stakeholder, after all. Um, but as a bit of an olive branch, and I, I do, I, I've got to say, I see this as an olive branch. Um, they have said that Ealing could buy their way into the Premiership as well. Now, I, I personally, I'd love to see Ealing in. Um, you know, Daryl and I 
do sevens at Ealing all the time. Um, and it's a fantastic place. They couldn't they couldn't run the premiership game there. They're gonna to have to find a proper a proper stadium to do it. And I'm sure that they will. That there's a lot of money behind them. Uh, and I'd love to see Ealing because I think I think they're really challenged hard, a bit like Exeter did when they came up and Worcester did again this time round when they came back up. I think Ealing could really do a number on, on a few of the sides and stay up. Um, so the talk is Saracens are coming straight back up. Now, we have talked on this show about Saracens have to stay down, according to the regulations, for two seasons. Uh, and that's just because you have to prove the season before's finances before you can apply as the, as the champions to go up which means that they couldn't do that because the season before they were actually found guilty of uh, money laundering and all those sorts of other things and whatever you want to call it, which is why they were relegated. So you'd have to spend a year in this, according to the regs, you'd have to spend a year in the championship just to prove your financial um, wherewithal and that you were abiding by the rules before you then went on another campaign. And if you won that campaign, they would look at your last season's accounts and the season before. So we've talked about that before on the show. Now it's completely the other way around. We, we are talking that they will just come back up regardless because that's what the other premiership clubs want. And as a bit of an appeasement, Ealing are, are given an opportunity to buy in as well. So what do we think about that? The it's a fair game. Is expensive. Yeah, yes. it's going to be something like twenty or thirty million. Um, that's that's yeah, that's what I've heard. It's going to be around the twenty million pound mark to buy in. But they do have they do Ealing do have a really good backer though. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So it will be interesting to see uh, see what does happen. The, what you've got at the moment in the championship is approximately fifty percent of the clubs in the championship don't want to play at all this season. They just no. want to can the season so they can release their players and they can begin yeah you know, they can then get planning for the for the next season um but uh while there's these rumors that they're going to start to play again in january and there'll be some pre-seasons very late this year or very early in january then um of course they're kind of on printer hooks on hold waiting to see what happens yeah I mean, look, this year's a bit of a funny old old time isn't it um and what they need is a really quite inexpensive, very, very rapid and very, very accurate uh, antigen test. And if anybody wants them, I've got some down here. Uh, <laughs> just search ictdiagnostics.com uh, <laughs> and we'll save, we'll save you loads. Um, but no, I think, I think it, is, it is weird because, you know, this is the way I look at it. You've got championship uh, clubs that are, some are professional, some are semi-professional and some aren't. Um, and you do that, you take that and you extrapolate that into the women's premiership and you've got exactly the same makeup. You've got certain players who are centrally contracted, certain players who are full-time and certain players who are not, within e probably with every team. But they are playing rugby. So why then aren't the championship teams playing rugby? Mm, see, nobody's got an answer, have they? It's too many amateurs. Isn't there, isn't, there, isn't there about the same number, though, in the Women's Premiership, Pete? But I thought the Women's Premiership were uh, tested and everything and they all had to be means tested to go into it and all. Nope. There's also a lot of Women's Premiership players who aren't actually in the UK right now. Yeah. They've actually opted to stay out. I know a couple of Wasps players and so on that, that I haven't gone back yet because they'd have to do a 14-day quarantine anyway. Yeah, and, and, and exactly. modern, modern Park players must have been and disappeared completely because they're... 105 nil at the weekend. Yeah, I, know, I saw it. I was talking to the, one of the girls who scored a hat trick earlier in the week. I mean, you see that, Julian, then, but are women's prem? So, certainly at international level, they have a um, the professional athlete um, dispensation for quarantine, which is yeah. which is why France uh, French ladies said that they would go and travel to Dublin instead of the other way round. They would go over there because they have that dispensation as professional athletes whereas the Irish women don't of course in the end the game was cancelled because too many of the uh, the players came down and tested positive at that level but I, I just think we, we need we need to agree a standard across the board 
whether it be for Premiership, Championship, Women's Prem, and, and we need to protect these. We're, we're, we're too keen to try and get rugby back, but at the same time, we're, we're very, very keen to stop rugby coming back. And there's a huge disparity in the way that we treat the, the, those three key leagues at the it's moment. A, it's one of those touchy subjects, though, isn't it? Everybody <coughs> wants to play the game. But not anybody wants. Nobody wants to get sick, and nobody wants to be responsible for. I, I don't want to hold myself responsible if I get somebody else sick and somebody dies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, don't want that to happen right. at all. So I did tend to go on the safe side and say no. And I think there's a lot of players who have the same opinion. So if I was back in the UK, if I was back in the UK, I wouldn't want to. I, I haven't seen my parents for nine months now, hmm. maybe. Um, I did you, did you, like this, but uh, if I was back in the UK and I'd played rugby with a group of people, I would not go and see my parents. So. Yeah. Did you did you hear about the the tournament that that went ahead apparently well, illegally in South Africa um, yeah. when there's not supposed to be any rugby and a tournament went ahead and one of the kids uh, died yeah. from it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, never mind the litigation there. I mean, how bad would you feel? Personally, well, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole thing, isn't it? And and, and, and let, that, that's that's a simply factual reason why there is no rugby in Malta right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's that simple. simple. You've got internationals; they're tested. Premiership here, they are tested. Championship, they're not tested, so we're not going ahead. Women's Premiership, they're not tested, but we can go ahead. And that, to me, just th th there's that whole disparity that says that's just wrong we apply the same level across the board and we don't bother because well, that's, 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 that's the the those women coming down with it just yeah. because we want or somebody wants them to play rugby did, did win well, did they win to not have to quarantine himself because he was he tested positive yes. didn't he so, so Wayne Barnes has had two quarantines um, so far. One because he was on holiday over the summer and came back and needed yeah. quarantine. And then he tested positive uh, and had to quarantine for his 14 days as well. Yeah. So, you know, and, and we're talking about pro rugby and, you know, and the bubble thing where you looked after and all the rest of it and, you know, the money's there to do the testing and stuff like that. And then yeah. you've got countries like, you know, with all due respect, like, you know, Sweden and, and lesser say maybe Malta, um, that don't have that financial backing and don't have all these things in place. And yet people are still saying, yeah, we want to get the rugby going and all the rest. And we're, we're you, you are. It's, a, it's a difficult decision because everybody loves the game. But I you know I'm not putting no, my I, life or any of my family or friends' lives, you know, uh, for, for, for a game of rugby. And no matter how much you love it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we, we, we simple, simple fact are, you know, You've got to have a country that's clean before you can actually get back to sort of start start and start to come back to normality. I said Sweden didn't stop. We had a full end of season. Uh, we put, played from the summer onwards. Um, we put things in place to minimise the risk, but we still played rugby. I've got a kid behind me now asking if he wants hot chocolate before he goes to bed. So I'm uh, on that note, on that bombshell of hot chocolate before bed, it really is time to say goodnight tonight. Uh, we've had a great time uh, and we will see you all with more. Do you know, we've, we've actually talked some rugby, which is really, really odd. Did we? Did we? Last we? Minutes, obviously. Good luck on Friday, Dar. Yeah, thank we you. Well, I'll, 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 I'm, coming, uh, I'm coming next Monday. He's back on next Monday. Mm. It'll have slimmed down and he'll have got his belt on in the right place. He's going to show off the perfect physique and show us all up next. I've got to wait. I've got my coronavirus test to, to pass first before I can go. So we'll see what happens. Well, good luck with that as well, mate. And we'll uh, we'll catch you uh, next next week. But uh, until then, everybody uh, from me, from everybody else tonight, and uh, uh, Phil, who's had to go early, it's good night. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah.